Hello, welcome to Unit 10, Circles. Uh, what you see in front of you is the grid for Level 1. Um, you can see uh, Level 1 is going to cover these three main areas, parts of a circle, which I hope a lot of it is review for you, um, central angles and arc measures, and inscribed angles. Okay, and then when we get done with those three, then we'll go on to um, a couple of challenges dealing with circles, and we'll finish the level with our quiz. So let's get started. Um, if at any time um, you don't quite get what, what's written down, just go ahead and stop the video and uh, continue. So first of all, a couple of questions here at the top. Let's think about it. Okay, the first one is, um, are all circles the same size? Obviously that is no, they are not. Okay. Number two, what determines the size of a circle? So whether that circle is small or large, um, what determines that is what we call the radius or in conjunction with that is the diameter. We'll learn the specifics about those in just a second. And the third question to consider is, are all circles the same shape? Well, yes, they are, <clears throat> excuse me, the same shape, um, but that leads to that all circles are the same shape, but they're different sizes. Okay, and when we look at that, if they're the same shape and different sizes, that means they are not congruent. If you remember from unit um, in the first semester that any shapes that are congruent are both um, the same shape and the same size. But if they are um, the same shape and different sizes, then we call them similar. So circles would be considered similar to each other. All right, so let's go through a couple of definitions and just some vocabulary that would be common with this. Okay, these are just parts of a circle. So the first one is, what is a circle um, as definition? So a circle is defined as the set of all points that are the same distance from a center point. Okay, so going around this circle, there's infinite number of points all the way around there, and all of those points are the same distance from this center point, um, which in this picture is A. If we were gonna label this, we would use a little circle with the center point, and then we all know we're talking about circle A. Okay, as uh, presented up above, uh, uh, radius is a line segment, okay, or just a segment, from the center to a point on the circle. Okay, so if I look over at my picture, the center is at point A. Obviously, there's infinite number going around here, but they've labeled point B. So from point A to point B, that's considered the radius. Um, it is a segment, so you'll notice that when we name the radius, we name it as a segment with endpoint A and endpoint B. Chord, okay, is a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay, so when we had radius up here, we had um, one endpoint of the segment in the center and one point on the circle. We call this a chord. I know it looks like chord, but it's pronounced chord. And that's where we have two points that are on the circle and a segment that connects those two. Okay, so it could be two points anywhere on the circle. As long as they are connected and both of those endpoints are on the circle, it's called a chord labeled with a um, segment CD. Diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. Okay, now on your notes, yours might be on the next page here. Sorry about that. So a chord that passes through the center, so here's the center, we have a chord that goes from endpoint to endpoint, that going all the way through the center is called the diameter. If I go from the center out, that's the radius. If I go from one side to the other, that's the diameter. Okay, and again, it's a segment, so we would label that with its endpoints E and F. Okay, on your second page, I guess you're already on your second page, sorry. A secant, a secant is a line. The other ones that we've talked about are actually segments. So a secant is a line that intersects the circle twice. All right, so if I look over at my picture, this is what it looks like. I have point G and point H, and I have a line that intersects both of those. Okay, hence the label here, line GH, that's called a secant. The next one is called a tangent. 
Okay, again, these are both lines. Okay, so we're going to have arrows on both ends. So a tangent line is a line that touches the circle once. Okay, notice up here the secant was twice. A tangent is once. Okay, now this point where it touches the circle, that's called the point of tangency. Okay, the point of tangency is the point where the tangent line touches the circle, just at this one single point. So a tangent is a line, so we would label it with line A or IJ, and the point of tangency would be this point right here where it touches the circle at that one spot. An arc, there's lots in this box here to kind of consider here. An arc, if I go around the circle, we call that circumference. So an arc is just a piece of that circumference. So like from K to L here, okay, it kind of arcs through there. That's a piece of the circle. That's called an arc. Okay, now we have three kinds of arcs, and we'll get more into this into the next lesson, but three kinds. We have a minor arc, which is less than halfway. Okay, we label it using two letters. So here's an example of KL, that's less than halfway around the circle, so that's KL, and you notice there's a little arc over the top of this one. Okay, that signifies from here, going around, to here. A major arc is more than halfway. Okay, and we always label that one with three letters. So if I go from L through K and stop at M, that's a major arc. I'm going more than halfway around the circle. Okay, so we would label that one L, K, M with a little arc over the top. That's called a major arc, more than halfway. And a semicircle is exactly half. Okay, we don't have that on our picture, but we do um, label it again with three letters, depending on which way we would go around. Um, that would be called a semicircle. Okay, this just helps you determine which way around the circle you're going to go. Okay, because if I said KL, that would go from here to here. If I said KML, that would go K through M and stop at L. Those obviously have two different measurements to them, so um, the way that we label and name them will be important. And the last vocabulary word that we need to pay attention to is called a sector. Okay, a sector is a piece of the area of the circle. So you can see here, area member is going to be covering this whole piece here. So a sector is like a piece of pie or a piece of pizza where two of the sides are radii. So N to O and N to P are both radius. The other side is an arc. So it's not a triangle, but it's got those three sides and it's part or a piece of the area. So make sure you focus on what's a line and what's a segment. Um, last thing I want to kind of mention here, when we talk about circles, there's two numbers that are really important. One of them is 180 degrees, the other one is 360 degrees. Those two pieces will, or those two pieces of info will help you find lots of different angles as we move forward. So 360 is the distance, excuse me, not the distance, but the number of degrees all the way around a circle, and then of course 180 would be the number of degrees that are halfway around the circle. Okay, if you're not sure of any of these terms, let me know and we'll get you straightened out.